What's up guys, John Sonmez here from simpleprogrammer.com. Today we're gonna talk about whether or not you should be worried about the changing nature of, of programming jobs. Basically, you know, all the automation that's happening, right? This is the way that technology has always evolved and that it will continue to evolve that way. So there's two things that I'm gonna talk about here that are, I think are very important. I've seen some other people do videos on this topic and I think they've missed these very two important points. If you're just joining me for the first time, I'm John from simpleprogrammer.com. On this channel, I teach you the soft skills you need for your soft developer, software developer life, how to become a better person, how to become a better programmer and live a better life as a software developer. You know, everyone teaches all these technical skills and that's great and I did as well, but I, I feel like the soft skills are, are sorely lacking. Click that subscribe button to join us. And also if you haven't checked out my books, I've got a book called The Complete Software Developer's Career Guide. It was a Wall Street Journal bestseller. I think the only software development book to ever be on the World, uh, Wall Street Journal bestselling list, as far as I know, and uh, the Software Developer's Life Manual, both of them you can get on Amazon. All right, so yeah, so there's two things I wanna, I wanna tell you about that I think a lot of people haven't covered about this, okay? The first one is that, you know, historically what's happened is that technology has been built on top of technology and you sort of have this abstraction layer that you operate at and then software developers or coders or programmers start writing at that level, right? So initially, if you think about the history of, of software law and programming languages, it started out with very low level languages, right? Uh, with uh, assembly language, right? With basically twiddling bits, right? Flipping bits, writing, uh, you know, assembly language. And then what we ended up having was compilers that allowed us to write at higher level languages, right? And then, you know, eventually to the point where an another level of abstraction, which is object oriented programming, right? Languages like, you know, first like C++ and C Sharp and Java and things like that, that allow us uh, like yet another layer of abstraction Action, okay, but what you need to realize about that is that we still need to go down to the lower levels at times, right? And there's always going to be programmers that need to do that. In fact, COBOL is still a programming language that is in high demand, right? So you're never going to escape those things and there's always going to be legacy systems, but what will likely happen and what I know will happen is that we'll start writing code, we'll start programming, combining things at higher and higher levels, right? At, at some point, there's gonna be another layer of abstraction and you're not gonna really see it happen, but eventually it'll happen where you're no longer writing code in the way that you write code, right? It, it will be more of combining systems together, but there'll still be the logic. You'll still have loops, you'll still have conditionals, you'll still have all of these sort of mechanics that exist in the logic that ultimately underlies programming and the reason why I know this is because even if you go down the stack to the lowest lowest layer ultimately even at the level of the registers in a CPU it's still that same logic right it, it still comes down to the the ands and the ors right and all of the the same level of, of logic it's just that we program at a higher and higher level of abstraction so the reason why I'm saying this is because there's always gonna be programming jobs. You're never going to not have programmers because you're always gonna to have to need to put things together and have to have logic, right? No computer is going to make all that logic. Now there's pieces of it that will be created and reusable pieces that will make it so more people can access that, but ultimately combining them together, there's gonna to be someone that is going to say, if this, then that, okay? Uh, now, the second thing that I think is important to realize about this is that, you're always going to have the software that builds up the higher levels, right? So think about it this way. You're always going to have an operating system, okay? And that operating system is going to have to work at the lower level. There's no way that you can have that code that runs on the OS code that isn't programmed, right? Uh, there's, there's certain things that you can build, like you look at tools like Wix or Salesforce. Well, so far, and, and, I, and I think that we'll never really hit the point where you can create Wix within Wix, okay? It's, it's different than, you know, I remember the, the story of Turbo Pascal being created. I believe that in the story of that, there was a point where there was enough of the language implemented that they could implement the compiler for the language in the language. And that's probably the story for many programming languages, but that won't happen with tools like Salesforce and Wix and things like that. You're never gonna get to the point where that 
kind of code is going to be able to be created from it because it's designed to do something different, right? When what we've seen in the past is programming languages that have evolved to a higher level, but they were designed to actually create the code and the logic. They weren't designed to do something functional. They're designed to be, uh, you know, Turing complete languages in themselves. So when you have a Turing complete language, okay, it can operate at a higher level and essentially bootstrap itself and create itself because it's Turing complete. But when you look at software like Wix, for example, it's designed for specific functionality to create web pages or Salesforce, which is designed to be a CRM system, right? And you look at all these kind of drag and drop editors and things like that. They're not designed to actually create logic and to be Turing complete. So it's a totally different thing. So the reason why that's so important, and I think a lot of people have missed in talking about this, is because that means that there's always going to have to be programmers that create that software at the lower level. So it is possible, it's conceivable that the lower level programmers, that there may be less of them and that there'll be higher level integration type of programmers that are integrating systems together through APIs. And, and a lot of it may be more drag and drop and connecting you know, pieces here and understanding what the technology is. But there will always be low level programmers. There will always be programmers that have to operate at that lower level in order to build those software systems. And as things evolve and technology evolves and you have more automated systems and ways for people to build software without having to write code, there's going to be more programmers that have to create those systems and maintain those systems. So that skill set will always exist. It's never going to disappear. Uh, what you may see is, you know, and, and you're already seeing this, is a reduction in the number of web developers that you need to create web pages, right? So that kind of code is not going to be as necessary because people can drag and drop. They can create websites on their own. They can create payment processing that's already been done. And that's a good thing. It allows technology to move forward. But, you know, think about also, I'll, I'll give you kind of a bonus one here. Is think about some of the cutting edge type of, of technologies. Think about AI and self-driving cars and where we're going in that direction. And those things are not going to be drag and drop. Those are going to require programmers to define, to create that logic, to build those systems and the next level systems above that. Now, maybe we get to the point where AI is smart enough to actually write code and to you know come up with logical systems or to solve problems like that. And then maybe things shift, but we're still pretty far from that. And I would say that even in that case, there's still going to be some kind of of way that things are going to have to be combined and, and, and created and, and programmed. But, you know, if AI gets to the point where AI can actually literally write code and figure out the logic of code and solve problems in that way, then, you know, pretty much every single job is going to be negligible, right? It's not going to matter anymore because accountants, bookkeepers, uh, lawyers, right? All of these things, you know, could be solved by that same kind of AI. So like looking at programming specifically and saying, oh, you know, that's is technology is going to erode it. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense. So I wouldn't be worried about it, but what can you do as a software developer if you're, if you're worried about this problem if you or to prepare for the future? Well, the best thing that you can do is that you can create a very specialized niche that you're good at. Figure out some technology, figure out some platform, some specific things so that even if a lot of the jobs disappear, your specific thing that you're really good at, that you're going to get hired for that. That's that's really important to do, right? Being a generalist, just being a programmer, there's some use to that. But as those jobs may be compact and there's less of those general jobs, but there's more specific jobs, then it's not going to be as high demand, right? Just being able to do web development, for example, it's not an extremely useful skill at, at this point in time because people can say, well, I can just drag and drop and create a web page. But if you can do low level programming, if you can design systems and combine systems and interact with APIs, or you have a very specific platform that you can work on or operating system that you can work on at the low level, right? Driver code, right? All these things, those things are always going to be needed and you can make sure that you have a demand for your services all the time. Let me know what you think. Are you afraid of losing your job to AI? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think.